Hi everyone, this is a video tutorial 2.3. Our objective is to create a temperature monitor system that will read and display the current room temperature on this LCD screen over here. Our learning objectives will be learning the liquid crystal display library, converting from N-long data to Celsius and Fahrenheit degrees, and lastly we're going to touch on the different methods of filtering data. Here is our LCD screen. Um, as you can see, there is the word temperature being printed on here along with 0 0.76. This number over here represents our current voltage that is being read from our temperature sensor just right here. Right? And then here is the um, degrees in Celsius and here is the degrees in Fahrenheit. Um, I, have a I have a potentiometer over here. This potentiometer basically just controls the brightness level of the screen. Uh, I don't want it too bright over here, so that can be manually adjusted. And then again here is the temperature sensor which reads the analog data. So it's basically showing the current room temperature right now. Um, if I can, I can try to raise the room temperature if I put the, the body heat of my finger over it. As you see it jumped to 28. Should be jumping more, but that's fine. The wiring does look a bit messy right now, but if you refer to the fritzing diagram, it will help you much better. Okay, we're going to continue on the software portion of this tutorial. So at the very beginning, we're going to start off how we usually start off with to initialize all our libraries. So we're going to use the Liquid Crystal Display Library from Adafruit. So to install that, we're going to go to Arduino Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries, and then you can search Liquid Crystal. So, um, so, so you can see there's two different ones. One's by just Adafruit and then one's by Adafruit and Arduino. Um, there's not really much difference in between the two, but just make sure just to select the latest version and click install. Um, I already have it installed, so I don't need to do that. So once you already have it installed, you're gonna to go to include library, then you're gonna find it in your list, look at crystal, and then there, it writes it for you. So besides that, we're gonna also write in include software serial.h. Okay, now we have that, we're gonna use, we're gonna call upon our LCD screen with this class. Thank you. With crystal LCD, and then these are the different pinholes that we set up earlier on our data sheet, sorry. 12, 11, 5, 4, 3, and 2. And then we're gonna go constant int temp underscore pin. Temperature n equals zero. So that's where that's where we're gonna plug in our temperature pin. But it's not gonna be in digital pin zero. It's gonna be an analog pin zero. Um, it doesn't matter if I write an a zero there or a zero. It's the same thing. But for a zero, it it just differs the difference between the digital and analog zero. Okay. To that, we're just gonna call some variables. So we're gonna write float voltage, um, float celsius, float pre-celsius, I'll explain why I'm using this later, float fahrenheit. So these are all the variables that we're going to be using. So first off, we're going to get the analog value from our temperature pin and then we're gonna convert that data to voltage. After we converted the analog to voltage, we're gonna convert voltage to Celsius, and then Celsius to Fahrenheit. I'll explain why I, I have previous Celsius in there later on. What we wanted to do here, actually I'm just gonna list off the steps here. We're gonna go one, convert analog to voltage, two, Convert voltage to Celsius. Three, convert Celsius 
to Fahrenheit. So those are mainly going to be our three steps. So for each of these steps, we're going to create a separate function for each of them. Okay, so we're going to split these up, these three steps, into three separate functions. So our first function's going to be float convert voltage. And then we're going to pass the unlog pin value into the function. Open and close that function. And then we're going to go float y. Um, the reason why I'm using floats instead of ints is because um, when converting from analog to voltage, I'm, I'm going to require a long decimal number. And if I just if I use an integer, I won't get any of those decimals back. So I'm going to declare this local variable float y. And I'm going to go y equals analog. Sorry, my space bar's not working. And log read. Log pin. Times. And this is a constant value. This number right here will basically convert our analog data to voltage. It's basically um, 1024 divided by 5. That's what this number is. So 1024 is good. It's, that's our max analog value that we can obtain. And five volts and five is the max voltage you can obtain. So you, you get this ratio and then you basically times your analog by this number to convert it to voltage. So after we obtain our new voltage value, we're just gonna return it. Do we return it? We're gonna write it back up in here. So we're gonna write voltage that's our variable up there. <laughs> equals convert voltage. And then we're going to pass in our temperature pin, which is A0 or 0. Doesn't matter. OK. OK, so we finished step one. We converted from analog to voltage. Now let's convert voltage to Celsius. So it's pretty straightforward. It's nearly the same exact sort of steps. <laughs> Float convert. Convert Celsius. And we're going to pass through our voltage. Open and close brackets. Just make some room down here. There we go. So here we go float x. And then x equals x equals our voltage value minus 0 0.5 times 100. So this right here basically takes our voltage value, minus it by 0 .0, 0 0.5, sorry, and then times it by 100. This basically converts our um, voltage value to Celsius in degrees. Um, I did not make up this number. Um, it's, you can Google it. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to return x. So I'm going to go Celsius equals convert underscore Celsius voltage. So we're basically taking this voltage number that we obtained from over here and passing it through this function down here. This function will convert our voltage number to Celsius in degrees. Okay. So last step is to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, but with a different um, conversion number. So convert Fahrenheit float Celsius. I'm going to write float Z. Z equals Celsius times 9.0 divided by 5.0 plus 32. Again, this is very constant. This is basically how you convert Celsius to Fahrenheit mathematically. 
return z. Okay. Then now let's write that back up here. Fahrenheit equals convert Fahrenheit Celsius. There we go. So now we finished all our conversions. And then now let's display it onto our LCD screen. So first we're going to go back to our void setup and initialize our LCD screen. So we go to lcd.begin and then our screen size is 16 by 2. lcd.clear just to clear the screen right before we start it. It's just good practice. lcd.print we're going to print the word temperature. I'm writing this in the setup because I want it to constantly always be in there. Now I'm going to explain why I have previous Celsius here. So I don't want to be sending data constantly to, to the LCD screen because if I have the same, let's say I'm reading 23 degrees on my sensor, I don't always want it to be sending 23, 23, 23 in like every single millisecond, right? So I only want to, I only want to send data to the screen when I change the temperature. So only when I need to, I would send data and, re and refresh the screen. So I would only send 23 once, and then if the, change, if the temperature changes to like 27, and then it would change. Okay, so I'm gonna write this if statement right here. If, if the absolute value of the previous Celsius minus our original Celsius, if it's, let's say, greater or equal to two degrees. So if there's a difference of two degrees, then if, the, if there's a difference of two degrees, then we're gonna change it. So we go to LCD dot set cursor zero one. This just starts at it's at the far left. Okay, and then LCD dot print this is just clearing the screen, basically. Or leaving a gap, sorry. And then LCD dot set cursor again, zero, one. Just resetting it again. And then now let's print out our temperatures. So first we're gonna print out our Celsius. That's our variable. And then LCD dot print. Let's write a big C, just like that. Let's put a space in between there. All right, it's gonna read this space over here as it's gonna read the C. So we have lcd.print, Fahrenheit, lcd.print, F. I don't need a space because that's basically the end of my thingy. Okay, now we have um, it printing our Celsius and Fahrenheit on the screen. Um, let's also print the, the voltage value. Okay, so I'm going to write this somewhere else on the screen. Uh, I'm writing it on the first row, but the very last character. See dot print voltage. There we go. This function right here does not do anything just yet. So this is basically saying if our previous Celsius minus our current Celsius, if it's greater than two, then we're gonna print towards the screen. So our previous Celsius right now does not equal anything just yet. It equals zero. So to change that, we're gonna write this. So prev Celsius equals Celsius. So let me give you a quick example over here. So Let's say our Celsius, I'm just gonna write in comments right here. Let's say our Celsius right now is 23 degrees Celsius. So that's our current Celsius and our previous Celsius right now. Our previous Celsius right now is 0, 0.0. Equals previous Celsius. So Celsius equals 0, 0.0. Um, this number subtracted this number is greater or equal to 2. So that means it's got to write towards the display. After it writes towards the display, it's got to make our previous Celsius equals our Celsius. 
So now our previous Celsius is now equal to 23 degrees Celsius, right? So this means it won't write twice the screen again because this minus this is zero, right? That means this function will not run again. However, if our, our temperature rises by two, let's say it's now 25, then now our Celsius subtracted our previous Celsius is now equal to two. 25 minus 23 is equal to two. And then it would execute this function again and refresh on the LCD screen. And then again, it would make our previous Celsius equal to Celsius. So this filter comes in handy with a lot of different applications when dealing with any types of any types of data that doesn't require to be um, to be constantly refreshed, or if you're getting the same value over and over again, and you only want numbers that are significant or different, then you want to use this type of filter. I used it many times in my previous projects during my school year, and it comes in it comes very very handy. Okay. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, please refer to the, the code will be posted online and please refer to the lesson and make sure you follow along on the breadboard diagram as well. Thank you for listening and have a good day.